What's up guys, I'm Claymore and today I'm bringing you a new series that I'm calling Book Smart, where I take a look at some how to draw books and guide references that artists have put out for people to purchase and enjoy and learn from. I got in contact with Jazza from the YouTube channel Draw With Jazza and he was kind enough to send me a copy of his book so that I can start this series off with a really fun and pretty easy book to understand. His book is called Draw With Jazza Creating Characters and it is a pretty large book with a lot of resources. Most drawing books I've come across uh, that are simple how-to books usually aren't this thick. I count this book more of a reference guide and it has got a ton of information in it. And starting from the beginning in the table of contents, you can clearly see that he has set up five different stages that simply outlines his entire book, which is really smart because it's something that even after you read this book, you can remember. Now here it describes what these stages are, at least the first four, and then the last stage is just as it says, putting it all together. So the first stage is discover, the exploration of ideas, themes, and visual styles. The second stage is design, loose play with brainstorm sketches. The third stage is develop, refinement of ideas and styles by narrowing down visual elements and testing the design for expected applications. And the fourth stage is deliver, creation of finished art as polished concept art, character turnarounds, expression sheets, and more. So that is a pretty good overview of this entire book. I'm not going to be going through every little part of what's in this book, but I'm going to be showing you a few different select areas that I find are interesting, and then you can decide if this book is right for you or not. So in the stage of discovery, I'm going to be taking a look at the four keys to preparing yourself. That feels like a pretty good starting point to understanding how this book is laid out. So when you're creating a character for animations or video games or anything like that, you'll usually be working for a client, someone who has hired you to do that. Or even if you're doing your own project, you could use these steps, which is scope, time, market, research, and similar projects. Now scope is talking about the overall project and needing to know how big the project is and what kind of design elements you're gonna have to put in there because of the scope of the project so if it's like an animation you may have to go with a little bit more simple and he goes into further details on each of these uh, in these paragraphs which you can read up on screen so then there's time which is obviously how much time you have to spend on this and depending on the scope of the project will kind of dictate how much time you have to spend on it then you have to decide do i have enough time to even work on this project in the market research section he's basically describing know your audience so if you're going into a specific genre of maybe a comic book or something know the tropes and ideas and styles that go along with that genre and that way you're appealing to the proper audience. Similar projects is just making sure that you have an original idea. So maybe go online onto Google and check through other people's ideas on similar subjects and try and make your design as different as possible. Those are the key things that I got from this section and it seems like a pretty good idea to consider these if you're going to be getting into a fairly large or complicated or time consuming project. Also in stage one, one of the more important things that I've found is the finding inspiration page, which for me personally is one of the harder things about art is trying to find the inspiration for a new and creative idea. Uh, and right here it says, one of the most important aspects of the discovery stage is filling your head with ideas and inspiration by seeking visual references. Right there, the seeking visual references is, in my opinion, the, the key term on this entire page. If you do not look up visual references, how are you going to know what you want to draw? You cannot be expected to remember how everything looks right from your head. I feel that out of the entire discovery stage, this page is the important. So stage two is design, and we know that that means we finally get to start drawing. We've gone through all of the discovery process. Now we get to start designing our character. One of the more interesting subjects in this design stage that he put in here is the deconstruct, 
then construct. This was something that I struggled with for a long time as a young artist. I would always try and jump to the most complex parts first and detail it and get it done, but then everything at the end just kind of seemed slightly off. It didn't feel whole. And the deconstruct then construct is you completely deconstruct the body or whatever you're trying to draw into its basic shapes. And that's what you see here is a finished body, but if you break it down into the basic shapes, it's much easier to get to this final product. And once you get comfortable with breaking down things into their basic shapes, instead of trying to remember how things are put together, you'll simply know how to put things together. So you'll know where the shoulder joint is. You'll know where the different muscles are. Because you went through and deconstructed the anatomy of a person, eventually you get to know how to manipulate the human body into any pose that you want and any size and proportion. Then it just goes through into deconstructing the head and then reconstructing the head. And it does the same thing with basic body, so it, you know, the construction of the body and deconstructing the complex torso and how everything fits together there. So as a reference guide, this book is super in-depth with how to start learning to use construction lines, because that's basically what this is teaching you here, is how to make construction lines so you can design any character you want. Following the guide of this book, once you've gone through and decided what some of the personality traits or the physical traits or other things like that that you want from your character, you move on to the actual brainstorm sketching stage. And he puts in here that you should start with the face first because that's usually the most important part of a character. That's what people are going to relate to the most. So you go through and you really throw any idea that you have down onto the paper and you decide elements of certain ones that you like and you keep refining that until you really like the final product of the face. Then once you get done with the face design, you can move on to the body, which on here, he is still playing with a few different designs of the face, which is fine, uh, but he's also narrowing down elements of poses and bodies and maybe little accessories that he really likes, and that only furthers his idea of the final concept. And with those ideas all set down and everything really decided for the character, he has us move on to the development stage, which takes those rough ideas and changes them into a finalized concept. From what I've found, once you get a little bit more experience, you can almost mash the design and development stages together. Obviously, you'll be designing it first and developing it second, but there's no clear divide. If you like something, you'll define it a little bit more, take elements of that, and then move it to another sketch and define that a little, little bit more. So these two stages for me kind of blur together, but it's good in this book that they are separate. So you can learn to decipher which stage is which, so you know a clear process and direction. And when I say this book has a little bit of everything, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here that you can use that's really good references. I mean, he's even included a little bit of color theory about how different colors affect the mood of a picture and the positive and negative moods of that color. And for a fairly simplistic beginner's guide, those are some really in-depth concepts to consider and that's super impressive that they're in here and displayed in such a simple way that everyone can understand and follow it. So the next stage is deliver and everything that we've looked at in this book up to this point leads here. So we've all got, we've, we've gone through and researched, we've designed, we've developed and now after the development stage you should have a pretty good idea of the concept and now you get to deliver it to the client. You could be delivering refined concept art, a head turnaround, maybe even a full body turnaround. Maybe for an existing character, you need a full expression sheet for an animator, or maybe they just need you to have some variance on an already existing character. It's all in here and it shows you how to do it from scratch. And with that amount of information, in a book to be able to come back and easily reference these things that is an amazing tool to have just sitting right next to your drawing desk as i'm going through this book i'm not much of a cartoonist but some of the artwork in here is super cool like this character here 
I'm I'm really into fantasy art and this character really appeals to me even though it's still in a semi-realistic semi-cartoony style the fundamentals are still there and if you could learn to do something to this position and you had the fundamental knowledge to take that into a realistic area that just means that this book can be used for any art this is teaching you the fundamentals and it can be adapted to any style so pulling it all together basically means that you have gone through all of the steps and you should feel pretty confident in your concept at this point and if you don't feel confident you might want to go back to one of the other steps and start from there again so you if you don't think it's inspired enough go all the way back to the design phase or even go all the way back to the discover page and look up different ideas just so you can become a little bit more inspired and create that original character that you really want as a side note these are some of my favorite drawings in this entire book and it's the concept art from jazz's animation the tale teller and you can see his entire idea process through here and he circled the ones that that he's liked so that they stand out from the rest and as you go through you can see the character starting to come alive he even does silhouette art to make sure that it stands out from the background and he has an expression list and these kind of sketchy concepts are my favorite things to see because you can really follow through the process of the artist and learn what they were thinking and in this book this little tidbit at the very end is my favorite part, just personally, because I really get to start to understand the headspace that he was in when he was creating these characters for this animation that was so important to him. That is my brief overview of Jazz's Creating Characters book, and there's so much more information in here that I did not go over. I just hit a few key ideas and I really hope that you guys enjoyed looking through this book and I hope you consider going to Amazon and buying this for yourself because it is an amazing tool to use and I know I'm happy that I have a copy and it'll be sitting right next to my drawing desk for frequent referencing. In part two of this video I'll be actually taking the information that I learned from this book and I'll be applying it to a concept of my own that I want to create. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this video then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to come watch me live then join me on my Twitch channel, you can also follow me on my Twitter to chat and get frequent updates. So until next time, have a good one.